Chapter 5, Section 4. We need to learn about the units of measurement of an integral. These can be critical to a problem. In this section, we'll discuss how to find the units of an integral. So suppose that you have an integral from a to b of a function f of x dx. The units of this integral will be the product of the units of f of x multiplied by the units of x. Once you do a couple of these, they're quite straightforward. Let's look at an example. Suppose that after t weeks, a population of moss grows at a rate of f of t equals 1.5 to the t square inches per week. What is the population after 5 weeks? Well, first we have to figure out how to set up this integral. We'll be integrating from 0 to 5, since our function is already in terms of weeks. Then we'll be integrating our function, which is 1.5 to the t, and dt, which equals 16.26. That you'll get by plugging this into your calculator. To figure out the units, we want to multiply the units of the function, which is square inches per week, times the units of the x variable, which here is t, so times weeks, because t is in weeks. So square inches per week, time weeks, the weeks will cancel and you'll just be left with square inches. So our units will be 16.26 square inches. Another thing that we need to talk about in this section is something called the bioavailability of drugs. The bioavailability of drugs is the total amount of drugs found in your bloodstream during the course of a treatment. So if you started taking a drug and we could consistently measure exactly how much of that drug was in your bloodstream, it would be represented by the area under a concentration curve. So generally, this curve is just like the one we saw with surge functions, which was also related to drugs in the bloodstream. So the area under the curve is what is going to be called the bioavailability of drugs. There's only a couple things we usually talk about with these, so let's look at them. So let's say we have two drugs, drug A and drug B. Well, you can see that there are different types of curves, so this is the sorts of information we can get. Since drug A peaks first, that means that this drug is absorbed more rapidly into the bloodstream. So if you have multiple drugs on a graph, whichever one reaches its peak first is absorbed the most rapidly. Next, we can also say that drug A has a higher peak concentration than drug B. That just means that its peak is higher than drug B, so the concentration is higher when it peaks. Lastly, Drug A will have a greater bioavailability than drug B since there's more area under the A curve than under the B curve. So these are the things you'll need to know. You'll need to know which is absorbed most rapidly, so that's the one that peaks first. Which one has the largest peak concentration, that's the one that goes up the highest when it peaks. And which one has the greatest bioavailability, and that's the one that has the most area under a curve. So if you're asked to find the bioavailability of just a regular concentration function, you'll just be integrating it as usual. Now would be a good time to try the homework from Chapter 5, Section 4.